Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another week of Nature News. I'm Alice and these are the biggest updates in wildlife, science, climate, and environmental policy for the week of October 10th. You all know I love bears, and this week the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. had a gender reveal party for this adorable little panda. It's just six weeks old, and Daddy Panda actually painted both a pink and a blue painting for the special day. And don't worry, they didn't start any wildfires. Surprise though, it's a boy, and it's going to be joining its two brothers in just a few weeks. How adorable. If you also love wildlife, do me a favor and smash that subscribe button, leave a comment down below, and share this video with a friend. And if you want to see even more wildlife right now, then now through November 8th, you can catch a ton of amazing wildlife documentaries at the Virtual Wildlife Conservation Film Festival, and tickets are only $12. I've actually been watching one of these videos every night, and I'm absolutely loving it. Climate change has caused rises in sea levels around the world. And in Italy, the city of Venice has spent the last 17 years working on a gate system to hold back floodwaters. It's named the Mose system, and it was finally put to use for the first time ever just this week during a high tide event. And the results so far are pretty impressive. The question though, is whether or not other cities around the world are gonna follow suit. In Miami, Florida, they're also working to fix their flood problem by raising streets and buildings due to the rising seas there. I'd love to know what you guys think about this, so leave your comments on sea level rise in the comments or connect with me on social media using the hashtag nature news. There's also great news out of the Americas for the public lands. Now, William Perry Penley, who was illegally running the BLM for close to the last year, was finally ousted by a federal judge. The even better news is that many of the decisions he made may also be invalidated. His position was supposed to be confirmed by the Senate, but President Trump failed to send his name in for appointment. Now, Morris, who was the judge, he also could call into question decisions made by officials in similar positions across the administration which has not nominated people to fill 133 of the more than 750 key positions that require Senate confirmation. Now, many of the people carrying out those responsibilities may now be challenged for doing so in violation of a law about filling federal vacancies. Have you ever walked along the Los Angeles River in LA? Well, it's one of the worst decisions the Army Corps of Engineers could have made for wildlife in California. It turned a once thriving wetland and river into a concrete channel. But now biologists and engineers are trying to restore this river and bring back the endangered California steelhead trout. Now there's actually only 400 of these fish left and historically the LA River was actually their spawning ground. Now steelhead, if you didn't know, are actually a species of salmon. And to save them, they actually plan to deepen the channel, add pebbles to the bottom, as well as boulders and terracing to create pools to a four and a half or 4.8 mile stretch that goes through downtown and would connect the fish to the ocean. I have to say I have biked this path and it pretty much is just a trickling stream. So it'd be great to see this ecosystem rehabilitated. Speaking of fish, the Pialoop tribe has notified Electron Hydro that the tribe actually intends to file a lawsuit over ongoing violations of the Clean Water Act and the Endangered Species Act because of fish killing operations of the Electron Dam and the pollution of the Pialoop River. Now, we talked about this a lot in one of my live videos and also in my salmon video a couple weeks back. Check that out if you haven't watched it. But the Pialoop Indians has for years opposed this dam, which is a known killer of salmon, including Chinook, according to the Seattle Times. Now, Puget Sound Energy used to own this old dam. They sold it in 2014, but in September, they put the company on notice of its intent to sue to cancel its power sales agreement if Electron Hydro can't meet legal and environmental standards at the project. Now, I believe this project can give power to about 40,000 people, but the percentage of how much they actually do was hard to find. One of the biggest fears of cutting emissions and going green is the end of capitalism. 
Now, this fear is immensely more great for world leaders who see rapid expansion as the main goal in business and leadership. So how can we rapidly expand in a world full of finite resources? So here's some food for thought from an interesting article I actually read this week on degrowth. Now, if the world's most prosperous societies tighten their belts, perhaps the drop in material production would give people more free time and perhaps working less would also shift our focus from never-ending consumption and help us build alternatives to carbon-heavy lifestyles. Maybe we would even become more embedded in our local communities again and, you know, learn to respect and live more closely with nature and the land. Just look at how many people have gotten back into the outdoors since the beginning of this pandemic and how many people have started their own gardens and other things like that. This is an interesting article. I've actually linked it down below in the description, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. That's actually all I've got for you guys this week, but join me on Sunday for a live chat on nature news, science, and wildlife at 11 a.m. Pacific time, and make sure you're subscribed for more videos on hikes, wildlife, nature, and travel. I'll see you next time, and don't forget to check out one of these other videos on my channel.